Hey you all, I hope your day is going great. In this video you are in how to use class based views with Django. We will cover what class based views are and why they are useful, how to capture the different request methods in your class based view, how to use generic views including how to overwrite the context data and more. Let's first convert this simple snippet list function based view into a class based view. Right underneath we can create a class called snippet list view and this has to subclass from view which we're going to import in a minute. And the code in class based views is of course organized in methods. So in this case, we can just use the get method because of course that's what the user is going to request in the case that they want to visit our web page. And it takes in the self and request. And then we can copy these two lines and paste them right here. And next up from Django.views, we want to import view. Now let's go back to our URLs and instead of using the snippet underscore list function based view, we are going to use views dot snippet list view. And then because this is a class and not a function and every view in Django is a function, we have to call the dot as view method, which comes from this view class. And you can see that we get the exact same result as before. So it's not really useful until this point because we just added a bit more code than there was before. But what we can now do with classes is extract our code into more meaningful components. We could for example create another method called get query set. And this is going to return snippet.objects.all. And then instead of passing in our snippet underscore list, we can pass self.getQueryset. And of course, it gives us the same result. And because of this behavior, we can, of course, still use inheritance as we would normally with classes. And Django provides us with a couple of generic views, which basically implement the most common challenges in web development for us, such as displaying a list view. So let's go ahead and from Django.views.generic import list view and detail view. We're going to use that as well. And instead of subclassing from view, which is just a bare bone version, let's subclass from list view. And we can get rid of all of this. And just by overriding a couple of attributes, we can now get the exact same behavior as before. First of all, let's set the model equal to the snippet. Then it wants a template name that it should render, which will snippets snippet underscore list dot HTML. And you see that we still get the same result. Awesome. We can overwrite a function that sits on this list view called get context data and take in the self, args and keyword arguments. And in this function, we just have to return the entire context for what we want to render with the template. Just as we are doing here, basically, here we have to return this part. Just for demonstration purposes, let's go ahead and copy this and return it. But of course, instead of snippet underscore list, there's another method attached on the list view called get query set. And it still works the same. And if we were to change this name in any way, of course, the template wouldn't find it anymore, thus giving us a blank page. But again, that wouldn't use the functionality that's already built into the list view. So we first of all need to get what the list view already gives us as a context. That's why we set context equal to super. Just accessing the list view dot get context data. Actually, we only need to take in keyword arguments, no arguments in this case, because of course dictionaries only contain keyword arguments. And now that we have the context, we can now override it however we want to. For example, we can say context of is expired equal to true, and then return our context. And then back in our template, we can just print out the value for is expired and we'll get true. And if we didn't have that, of course, we wouldn't get anything. <laughs> Should make sense. So this is what you want to use if you want to override the context data. Of course, there are many other methods you can override, such as get query set, which we just used a minute ago. And next up, let's do the same with this snippet detail view. So we can create a class called snippet detail view, which now subclasses from detail view, of course. And our model is going to be again, the snippet model. And then template name will be snippets, snippet underscore detail dot HTML. Let's change it to snippet detail view. 
view and let's click on this h1 link and you see the error that the generic detail view has to either be called with a pk or a slug so it doesn't accept id as the name argument anymore which is why we have to change it in the url so just int pk and we now get our snippet detail awesome and in this case we are doing it via the private key but of course you can also do it via the slug as the error already suggested in regards to when to use which type of view i would just look if a generic view exists which does pretty closely what you want to do and if you can use it without overriding too many things i would generally opt for it so yeah but that's up to you you can feel free to experiment with that but that was the gist of how to use class-based views and generic views i hope you all enjoyed this part make sure to let me know in the comments down below if you did and subscribe to this channel i hope to see you inside of the next one and cheers